Hello. We are live. One minute late. Lo siento. It's 2.01 p.m. Costa Rica time. Coming to you live once again from Fruits here at Roots Restaurant in Rhythmia, sunny Buena Costa, Costa Rica. <sighs> Thanks for joining. I'm going to just chill out for a bit while I see people starting to hop on. Hello, I see Jane and I see Sven. Hello, Marina. Nice to see you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm not going to lie to you. I've been running like a chicken with my head cut off for the last 10 minutes trying to get this set off. Have I not? You've witnessed. Yeah, yes. I've been running and running because I lost track of time. It happens here sometimes at Rhythmia. It happens here in Costa Rica when we're living the Pura Vida life. But I think I'm good. I think I got everything set up. Um, we're doing some Thai food. Thai this. It's like the joke, my, my, the kind of jokes my dad used to make. He was the king of the puns. I'm just bellying up to the bar. Let's talk. What do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> um, so we're doing Thai food here, and I'm just making small talk while I wait for people to get on board here. Uh, I don't want to get into the recipes too soon. Um, but I also am not going to keep you too long. I keep trying to keep these to about 30 minutes. Um, so I'm going to try to do that again for you guys today. And we're doing a little bit less recipes, but um, a lot of amazing, yummy ingredients and a lot of color. And this is some easy stuff that you can do at home and, and wow your friends. And I'm also doing one of these recipes because I want to... Um, redeem myself because I did serve it one night here at Rhythmia and I had one bad review mainly because we didn't put enough sauce with the noodles with our pad thai noodles. So we're going to redeem that today so I hope a certain Jerry comes by that he can taste how it's supposed to taste. Um, but anyways like I said we're doing Thai food here. Who else do I have on here? I've got Charles, Jennifer just joined. Hey Jennifer how are you darling? Um, and we're doing um, two things. We're going to do some summer rolls, um, spring rolls, summer rolls, I don't know when I started calling them summer rolls instead of spring rolls. I'm sure I read it somewhere. But we're going to be doing mango basil mint summer rolls in a rice paper wrapper. And we're also going to be doing a, a tamarindo um, dipping sauce for that. And if you had tuned in a couple of weeks back, I did a whole uh, Facebook Live about different um, ingredients that are um, local and easy to get and use here in Costa Rica. And tamarindo was one of those. It's a fruit that grows on a tree. We're going to be using the paste from that fruit today in one of our recipes. And we're going to also be doing a raw vegan pad thai with a cashew jalapeno tomato um, pad thai sauce. That's what we're doing today. And as always, I'm going to post the recipes in the comments below after the class. I'm going to try to remember to do that immediately today. I think I was a little bit late in this, this past week. But I'm going to do that so you guys all have the recipes. We got Rhonda here saying, Rhonda's back. I can't wait to meet you in February. Amazing, Rhonda. I can't wait to meet you in February. And you can try some of this stuff in person. It's super exciting. Um, I'm gonna, I brought my computer super close to me today, so hopefully I can see comments and stuff as they come up, and I'll answer questions as they come up when I notice them, so if you have anything to say, just let me know. As well, anyone here that's watching from Fruits, any questions, just holla, Yay! and I will answer. So, we're gonna get started, because in the essence of time, we're already four minutes in, and I haven't done a single thing. <laughs> classic, classic me. So, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our dip for our summer rolls, as mentioned. And this is a really simple, simple recipe. I do have my, my blender here today, and we're just going to be using it for one for the pad thai dressing. The rest of the stuff we're just going to be mixing in bowls. Who doesn't have bowls at home? No special equipment needed. So this is our, the, our dipping sauce. And I like to use nuts in a lot of my plant-based cuisine or seeds. I substitute seeds quite often. I have a lot of, I've had a lot of clients in the past that didn't eat nuts, so I substitute seeds. Um, just this past week, I had a guest here who was allergic to almonds, so I substituted the almonds in our chocolate bliss balls with sunflower seeds and served it to the whole group, and no one could tell the difference. So, you know, it's, it, that, that's a really good thing to know because nuts can tend to be quite expensive as well. So substituting in seeds sometimes is a great way to, to improve your pocketbook. So the first thing we're going to do here is, like I said, is make the dip. And what I've got here in this cup is some tamarindo. And what this, I'm going to walk right over here. As, as I do, I'll show you first. This is... Fruit. Oh, so I'm making a bit of a, just getting a little bit of a paste here. Do, 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 do. So this is um, the tamarindo fruit with the seeds that I've just got soaking in some water. Hi, Linda Shelley. Nice to see you. <laughs> super, super nice to see you. Now on the computer instead of in person. Um, so this is tamarindo. And what I've done here is I've just got some of these seeds. It's been soaking in water and I've been giving it some nice aggressive stirs for the last little while. And I'm just going to skim out some of this pasty stuff. So that without the seeds, you can see it's kind of got a, a nice thick texture. I'm going to toss some of this in my bowl. Um, you could blend this and strain it, but I'm just trying to keep the equipment usage to a, uh, um, a minimum today to show that it is possible to make some awesome stuff with that equipment. And I will be referring back to my past lives, <laughs> my past Facebook lives, and maybe my past lives. 
while we go through these classes. But I mean, I'm, I, what I'm speaking to is my Facebook lives um, a couple of times because there's some stuff that we've done prior that we could reutilize while doing these recipes. So in this bowl, I've got some of that tamarind paste. You can see it's pretty thick. It's going to give a nice viscosity, viscosity to our to our dressing. I'm going to set that aside. So ingredient number one, tamarind. The next ingredient I'm going to add in is almond butter, and this is just some fresh um, almonds. Venga, venga. Si, venga. Jonathan, venga. <laughs> I'm calling over one of my staff members because I think I promised you a while back that I was going to introduce staff members every week. So I've got Jonathan, one of my sous chefs, coming oh. around the corner here. He's going to come and say hello. It's, he's so, so hola. Hola. mundo. This is Jonathan, and he's hola. amazing. And he's one of my, Pura Vida, he's one of my great cooks. He's here quite often in the afternoon, and he executes my recipes. If you've been to Rhythmia, this man has cooked you plenty of meals with love. Siempre con amor, ¿verdad? Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Now you've met uh, Jean Paul from the kitchen and Jonathan. And I think I'm going to call over someone at one other person. Ariel. I've called you now, Ariel. You have to come. <laughs> so someone from the back of the house, Jonathan, and now Ariel, who is one of our amazing front of house hosts and servers and space holders and just an amazing, amazing guy all around. This is Ariel. Say hello to everyone watching. Pura vida. Pura vida. Exacto. Exacto. If you don't, See you later. He's heading home now. So nice. Thank you for popping in. And if you don't know what pure vida means, it's kind of it's a Costa Rican catchphrase. It means it translates directly to pure life, but it's kind of a, a way that we that we, we answer many different questions. How are you? Pura vida. How's life? Pura vida. You know, something goes wrong. Pura vida. It's just kind of a really nice way of just saying it's chill, it's relaxed, it's beautiful, no stress. So back to the recipe. So we got our tamarindo in, in here. I'm gonna add this almond butter. What was I saying about the almond butter? Do you remember? It was uh, freshly uh, ground. It was yes. Thank you. This is super helpful. Uh, helpful having folks around like this. Um, this is just almonds. Nothing but almonds that uh, we have made into a nice butter. Woo! Putting that in there. But where I'm at today. <laughs> Keeping it together. And I want to add a little bit more sweetness. Tamarindo is a fruit, but it's not very sweet. It's quite bitter. So typically when you use it, you'd add some sort of sweetener. So today we're going to add a little bit of honey. Who else we got going on here? Ana Maria. Carlos. Hola, Carlos. Pura vida. Carlos says pura vida. He knows. He's got it. Um, so we're adding in a bit of honey. If you wanted to do this fully vegan, um, you could substitute this for maple syrup or agave or, or even a coconut sugar. You could just whisk that in really well. So I'm just whisking as I go. Next ingredient is something that we've used many times before. This is soy sauce. You could, again, substitute amino acid, uh, sorry, uh, rice aminos, coconut aminos, nama shoyu, tamari, whatever you have on hand. But I'm going to use soya because I have that, in, have that handy. Next thing I'm going to add in is some ginger. And I'm just going to grate it in here. So this is uh, a piece of ginger, organic ginger, that I've still got the fur, the fur. <laughs> skin. I don't know. I don't know. Fur. Ginger fur. And I'm going to use the back of my spoon. I wanted to leave the skin on to show you. So one of the easy ways, instead of using a vegetable peeler, which is a pain in the butt, and I always cut myself, take a spoon and use it backwards. So using the back of the spoon, you can just run it along the ginger. Can you see that? I think you can. And then look at that, how beautiful. It's just peeling the, the skin right off. And it's really helpful because this doing it this way lets you get around all the knobbies as well, whereas a peeler tends to get stuck. So you just kind of rough it up. Ooh, just got ginger juice in my eye. Um, goes all around all the knobbies, get off as much as you can. Da, 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 I don't know why it needs a little theme song, but it does. And then look at this. It's like clear whoop, as can be. So there's our ginger. And in order to grate that today, I'm going to use another tool that most people have at home. I'm not going to use anything fancy. Last week, I think we used the rasp, the microplane. Today, we're just going to use a regular old box grater. This one's seen better days. It doesn't even have a handle on top anymore, but it still does the trick. And I'm going to use this blade here, the side, the, the kind of the fine, the fine grate as opposed to the big grate. Um, so this side here, and I'm just going to grate it in. And I'm not measuring this, but you will get the proper recipes, like I mentioned in the comments, with, with the proper amounts that I have tested and, and made it, and it's worked out to be delicious. It's all just a, an intuitive game of chance. Woo! That's all the ginger, <laughs> apparently. I don't know if you saw that, but that ginger was like, no more, I'm done. Putting that ginger down there, done with the box grater. Next thing I'm going to add is in is some juice of some green lime. This is a lime that I, I needed the, the zest of a lime for something earlier, so I zested it and then I just had it stored in the fridge, so now I'm going to use it for the juice. So and I like, this is a nice tip, that if you want to get lots of juice out of any of your citrus, just give it some, some 
elbow, elbow grease. So I've just got it sitting on my cutting board and I'm pressing down and rolling it a little bit and that's just gonna help loosen up some of the juice. Da -da -da -da. Cut it in half. And then I use my, the very best um, strainer that there is, one of the best tools in the world when I'm doing something like this, and I use my hand to strain it. So I'm just squeezing the juice right into my hand, leaving a little tiny crack between my fingers, and that's going to catch the seeds. Hey there, sunshine. Hello. Want to come say hi to our, all of our viewers? Hi, welcome. Say hello to viewers. Introduce yourself. This is one of our amazing guests that's been here getting his hello. miracle this week. Yes, I'm Cameron. He's Cameron, and I'm Meg, and you're live. we are live from Fruits here at Mythmia. How has nice. your week been? It's been excellent. How are you feeling today? Excellent. When are you leaving? Never. And never. I'm coming back. You are. Yeah, perfect. Seriously. I'm when gonna, have you worked? Good job here. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Beautiful. And how's the food been this week? Have it's you enjoyed excellent. The food? Everything is beautiful. I, I hope you guys come down and experience it for yourself. Amazing. Well, you can join us if you want. We got chairs here, Thank chairs you. there. We're just for having me on the show. we're talking about Thai food this afternoon. It's beautiful. So we're working on a tambourine dipping sauce. So what did I just add in there? I added in my lime juice. So I did both halves, right? Or did I just do one? I just did one. So I'm going to do another one because I love some limes. So far we've got tamarindo paste in here, which is a fruit, almond butter, ginger, lime juice, soy sauce, honey, honey. And then <laughs> the next thing I'm going to add in is just a tiny bit of olive oil. And this is going to help emulsify our, our dressing together. And a little bit, this is a quarter of a big hefty jalapeno. Now I'm not going to use the seeds because I don't want it to heat. I'm mostly too heat. I'm too hot. I just want the flavor. I'm just going to give this quick little chocaroni. It's a pretty big piece, so I'm not going to use it all. Let's set some of this aside. And as this sits, this is a sauce that I like to make in advance, and then I kind of let it sit for a bit, and then it it um, the flavors will really meld. So a little bit of the heat and flavor from the jalapeno oil will, will blend throughout. And then I'm just going to add a tiny bit of water because it's pretty thick. I mean, I like it thick. Like I like to to really just douse my 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 wrappers. But we want to make the dipping sauce. I'm just adding a tiny bit of water. Stirring that up. And I'm not going to add too much. I'm not going to add salt this time because we have the soy sauce in there. And I like to keep things low salt, if I can, low salt, low oil around here. And as you can see now, the texture. It's going to be not lovely. So I'm going to reuse this little bowl here. And this is our dipping sauce. Numbers. Anything with nut butter as the base, if you ask me, and ginger, no fail. Can't go wrong. So there we go. Recipe number one done. Tamarindo dipping sauce. Da, 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 da. What else we got going on here? Tamara, 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 Tamara. Hello, hello. Nice to see you. Hello, and we've got Victoria saying, "Megan, you're a rock star." Thank you. Just ordered your miracle meals. Oh, thank you. So I do have a cookbook. Um, it's a Rhythmia recipe cookbook that I wrote a couple of months ago called Miracle Meals. It is available on Amazon. We are. I mean, we also have it available at the gift shop here. And um, it includes recipes like some of the top requested recipes from our guests that have been here. Mostly, I think they're all mostly plant-based. There might be a couple of eggs in them, but super, super high vibe, high frequency. It's called Miracle Meals, plant-based high frequency meals. Just so you know. And I'm working on cookbook number three right now. So that'll be coming out hopefully in 2018. So we got our dip. Now we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do the mango wraps. And the ingredients are super easy for this one. So I've already got all the ingredients prepped in the essence of time. So what we need, the first thing, the main ingredient is these are Asian rice wrappers. And these things are super great. I use them in sweet and savory applications. I do dessert wrappers and I do some, the pad thai we make is really good wrapped inside this. But today we're doing the mango basil mint one. And Rick says, kiss, hey, kiss, kiss back at you, Rick. <laughs> so this is the, the main ingredient here. This is the, the, gonna be the outer part of our wrap. And I've also got some lettuce leaves that I've just washed and trimmed. So this is going to kind of work as, you'll see as we make it, but it's going to kind of fold everything in our wrap. I've got some fresh mint, which we call yerba buena here in Costa Rica. Um, and then regular mint, I'll show you what that looks like, just for the comparison. So I go into my little herb box. So this is what regular mint looks like here, and then this is yerba buena. I think this is a bold experiment versus regular mint. Not an herbologist yet. Then also the ingredients we have here is this beautiful array of colors. We've got our yellow mangoes for our solar chakra. We've got, you know, our orange, sorry, yellow is for our sacral chakra, orange for our solar. We've got purple here, which is for our third eye. Um, 
But that's not really what it's for. It's just how I'm just thinking about that as I'm saying that. But that's going to be ingredients inside our wrap, as well as some vegan basil pesto. And if you tuned in, I think last week I did this one live, kale basil pesto. And, and that's it. So super, super easy. And a kind of an unconventional combination of flavors, but super tasty. So how do we use these things, people ask? It's interesting. I was just watching um, a Gordon Ramsay video last night. I like Gordon Ramsay. And he was doing some summer rolls, which was kind of interesting. Um, he was doing some shrimp Thai style rolls, but um, this is these things are super easy. You can get them in any Asian market. Um, most regular supermarkets now have an Asian section. You can probably buy them. This is what they look like when they're fresh out of the out of the bag. So they've got this beautiful texture to them, and they're crinkly. And we just need to soak them in water. What else we got here? Brazil, Rick's from Brazil. Okay, and it seems to be very tasty. What you are preparing. Yes, Carlos, I think so too. <laughs> so, how to prepare these? What I've got here is just a little chafing tray. You could use, when I'm at home, I use um, just a metal pie plate um, and I just pour boiling water in it from the kettle. So, I've got in here just a couple of inches of water, and all you gotta do is take this guy and drop it in there, and let it soak, and then it's gonna soften up enough that we can roll it like a tortilla. Don't let it soak too long because it, as it soaks, it gets softer and softer and softer, and it, it will essentially crumble and fall apart when you go to use it. So I literally, as as we're doing this live, right now it's probably enough because my water was pretty hot. So you can see now, tortilla style. So I'm going to just drop, drop that on my cutting board here. Can you see that? So you can see that okay, right? I'm going to move some of this pad down stuff out of the way. So then all we need to do is, first of all, I'll take one of these lettuce pieces, and I'm going to lie that just at the, kind of at the, one, like the one third mark in on this wrap. So, can you see? Maybe. So I'm kind of doing it about this far in. Got that? Perfect. It's like we're rolling a burrito, only it's mostly raw. So I toss my lettuce in there. Then I'm going to add in a tiny bit of these carrots, these grated carrots. I'm going to add in a slice or two of thinly, thinly, whoops, thinly sliced slippery mango. I'm going to add in a tiny bit of red cabbage, and the red cabbage gives it a really lovely crunch and color, obviously. And a little drizzle of basil, pesto. I could have put this down at the bottom first, and then it would be a bit of a mess that I'm about to experience while I do that, but no stress. We'll love you And then I'm gonna add in a couple of little leaves of this mint. The mint and the basil pesto, like it's so herbaceous, with the sweetness of the mango is really, really quite nice. And then all we do is roll. So I'm grabbing this end, it's like rolling sushi, rolling a burrito, so you just wanna roll and tuck. Rolling and tucking. There we go. Roll and tuck with that lettuce. And as the once I feel like the veggies are nice and sealed, then I grab the end, roll that up like a burrito, like I said. Da -da 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 -da. And voila! Look at that beautiful little package. Now, if I was making these in advance, which I've done a million times for retreats that I've catered, is I'll roll up a bunch of them, and then I'll grab a glass um, cake dish and put a little oil on the bottom and that just to keep them from sticking and then I just stack these beside each other in the bottom of the pan. And then I will put a damp towel, tea towel on top to help keep the moisture in so that this actual, this rice paper itself doesn't dry out. And I'll just put the damp tea towel on top and store it in the fridge until I'm ready to serve. I won't make it more than several hours in advance, but you can make it a little bit in advance. The only problem is if you let it sit, sit much longer than that assembled, the, the rice paper wrapper might start to tear and fall apart. And then it becomes just a bit of a mess while you're eating, but it's still gonna taste as good. All um, right, so moving along, I'm going to add this to my plate, and I'm going to do one more for you guys, actually, so you can see it. Put this right down here. And I'm going to do one more real quick. Just so I have a pretty looking plate at the end. I'm letting that soak. I'm going to pull off my leaves here. How's everybody doing out there? How was Sunday? What's weather like? Are you, do you have snow where you are? Let me know. Let me know if you guys have snow. Who's got snow where they're at right now? I know I'm from Ontario, Canada, and the last couple of days people have experienced uh, snow for the first time of the season. Not gonna lie, I don't miss that much. <laughs> As you can see, we've had a beautiful sunny day here, but the nice breeze, right? There's been a nice breeze the last couple of days. So I've got my lettuce, putting in a, a drop of the basil pesto, and it's gonna be a little bit less messy with that, putting that down first. Adding in my mango, da, 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 da. adding in my carrot. This is a really tasty recipe, I'm not gonna lie. 
and then these uh, mint leaves that I had. Am I forgetting anything? I don't think so, right? You know what would be also really good in this is if we added in some peanuts. It would be really yummy. Or, you know, any cashews. I was going to say not onion, which is how we call cashews here. Um, any sort of mixed nut or seeds, some sesame seeds would be really good. Or some grated or shredded chicken or some cooked mini, like, baby shrimps or whatever you want to do for extra protein would be really good. So again, rolling up till my veggies look like they're salt stuck in there real well, pulling up my ends like a burrito, and rock, dropping and rolling. And then what I want to do with this guy, seam down, just so it doesn't fall apart. I'm going to cut it so you can see. But it looks real pretty on the inside. Look at how nice that looks. It's pretty, so pretty. And then when I'm plating it, I would put one noodle, one, one noodle, one down and a couple of up, a couple of up. That makes sense. And look at how pretty that is. I mean, it's an awful lot of dipping sauce that's more for a crowd, but it's perfect for me, actually. Um, and there you go. Do you want to try one of these? Come on up. I'll set that there for you. And you can be comfortable knowing that it's just your hand that's live on the Facebook, unless you want to come and say hello. No, I'm good. <laughs> All right, and we're going to move on to the next one now. So, hey, do you want to try? Mm. <laughs> Camera shy, some people are camera shy sometimes, but that's totally cool. So the next thing we're going to do is the pad thai sauce. Do I have anything else that zero degrees in Ontario? Belleville, hey, we have a guest here right now from Kingston. And I went to college in Belleville, uh, Carlos. I went there for television broadcasting for my first career at Loyalist College. Hi Candace Marie Fox, where are you watching from, girl? Why are you not sitting right beside me? You're supposed to be here. Where are you at, girl? Calling you out. Okay, moving on. To the pad thai sauce and we are going to use our what do you think is that tasty she's chewing and then we'll get the verdict and i didn't do anything with my hair today i'm looking like humidity got the best of me <laughs> awesome it's awesome awesome yeah two thumbs up so pad thai now so the base of this pad thai sauce is going to be cashews so i've got about a cup and a half of cashews here. They're, not, they're not soaked and i think we got all into that the details about soaking our nuts in the last thing um in the essence of time i'm not soaking them and because I have a high power blender, I'm not soaking them, and I'm just not stressing about it because it's a Pyramida day. So I got about a cup and a half of nuts in here. The next ingredient I'm gonna add in is some cherry tomatoes. You could use, like last week I used just some odds and ends of some sliced tomatoes. Got some um, cherry tomatoes here. I'm gonna add in about a cup's worth. Don't know if that's the recipe <laughs> that you guys are gonna get, but it's more or less. Um, and then we have a lot of flavor. So I'm gonna be using a whole food sweetener for this one. Last time we used a bit of honey, um, but today we're gonna to use raisins, and that's gonna be our sweetener. Originally I used dates in this recipe, but I've done a lot of substituting as of late, and now I'm gonna use raisins, so about two tablespoons of raisins. I also like to make a raisin paste that I use for a lot of things. We used a tamarindo paste for that dipping sauce. Did you taste the tamarindo? Awesome. Kind of a tangy yes. bitterness. Very nice. It's nice, huh? Um, but I like to do a raisin paste, and that's something I learned in a cooking course that I did with Chad Sarno and Ruby Cooking School, a plant-based professional course about that um, and it's something there's it's something that really stuck with me and making this raisin paste uh, is really easy you just take any sort of dry fruit you can make any dry fruit paste I use raisins and I just put it in my blender with just enough water to help it blend and it becomes almost like the texture of an apple butter and then I use that in any of my liquid recipes um, as opposed to using a sugar for example then at least with the whole food like a raisin you're getting all that health benefits the nutrition the polyphenols all of that good stuff and the fiber um, as opposed to just a liquid sweetener or a regular sugar. We're using raisins instead, and it's also going to give us texture to our sauce. Um, we're also going to add in a clove of garlic. I've got one big guy here. Cumin, which we talked a lot about. Just, uh, some ground cumin. And I like the, I, I just want to point out all of these little cups and saucers and stuff that I have. We have, I have a ton of these at home and here because I'm a strong believer in creating a good mise en place. Anytime I'm cooking, or not cooking, I wanna have make sure I have all my ingredients. First of all, make sure I have them all on hand. And second of all, make sure I have them all handy so that it's really, really easy. Um, today, I did all of this prep myself. I got everything together and it took me maybe 15, 20 minutes to chop all my veggies, get everything organized. So now, when I'm here with you guys, I don't have to think about anything, I just have to put it all together. So mise en place is super, super helpful, especially when you're actually cooking at the stove top. You wanna make sure you have everything chopped and ready to go so you're not you know, you don't have stuff cooking, and then you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot to mince my onion, or I forgot to do this, or wash my cauliflower. Then you're off having to do that, and you're, you have to either pause your cooking your process, or heaven forbid you burn something that's going on. So the next thing in this little 
ramekin style dish is turmeric. And I like adding turmeric to everything. I don't feel like it has much of a flavor. It's got a bitterness, but that's something that I think is, is easily masked. And it's so, so, so good for us. It's so, so good for us. So why not use it? And again, I'm going to add in a bit of soy sauce. And this is what's going to be our, our salt and our umami. And a bit of olive oil, which I'm going to hold off to the end. And that's going to emulsify. And the two other ingredients, uh, ginger once again. And we all know the trick. You know what? I still have a piece of that other one. Where did I put that? Ah, here it is. So I'm just going to toss this guy in about an inch. That's the one I peeled earlier. So I'm not going to waste time with that. And jalapeno. So this is that, that jalapeno that I cut off the quarter from. So I'm going to use about a half of this without the seeds. If you're a big, if you like heat, toss in the seeds in the pith. Pith? Ribs. Pith on a citrus is the white part on the bitter part on the citrus. The ribs is the, the white part inside the pepper. You can toss that into it. It's got some heat to it, but I'm not going to say I'm not really good with heat. I'm going to toss in half of that and a bit of water. I'm just going to start with about three quarters of a cup. It's just going to help us blend. Get that on the Vitamix. Pardon me for the noise. Give it a bit more water. And my olive oil is going to frizzle it. Now, I do sometimes add in some sun-dried tomatoes. I think I've talked about that in the past because I like the depth of flavor that that gives. Hmm. It's missing lemon juice. Or lime juice. Missing ingredient, not a missing ingredient. So I'm just going to cut this bad boy in half and use my amazing tools and then off to strain. So I'm just catching the seeds and then opening my fingers a crack to let the juice out. And you know what? I am going to add a pinch of salt. Just a little pinch of roni. Got some here. Put that back on my blender. Perfect. I can sense that it's perfect. So. Last but not least is our assembly for this. I'm going to get my plate here standing by and a mixing bowl. Grab the big one. I'm not, I'm not even on the screen right now. Sorry, guys. So here I got okay, chip about mixing bowls, by the way. I got two, one, two here that are pretty decent size. I would recommend getting every size possible if you're going to be in a lot of cooking and always use a way bigger bowl than you think you need. There's nothing worse than taking a bowl like this, filling it this full, and then sitting here trying to mix it without making a huge mess. It's ridiculous. I, in the kitchen here at Rhythm, we have bowls that are like this big around and super important, obviously, for cooking with this many people. But always use a bowl way bigger than you need. Save yourself the grief and the annoyance of having to clean up a huge mess that you've made because you just put way too much stuff in the bowl. So I'm going to use a super big one today. I mean, we're making a pad thai serving for like two people, but I'm using a big bowl. So the first thing we're going to do is a bit of a way back flashback to what I did. I think maybe it was last week as well. But we're going to use the spiralizing machine. So if you could do this recipe just as a, as a nice plant-based high live dish by using um, rice noodles, which, so this was the rice paper that we used for the wrap. You can buy rice noodles, which is pretty much the same texture. It's the same... Like, um, it's like dried rice made into noodles, and all you have to do is add boiling water, just like I did here, like rice vermicelli you could use, um, or pad thai noodles, super easy, um, if you want something a little bit more cooked with it, but today we're just going to be using vegetables as our, as our, as our base. So I've got, I'm going to use this big piece. So here's my zucchini, adding it to my spiralizer. Oh, you hear that? Sweet. Adding it to the center on the machine. I did this last week if you want to hear all the details about it. And then, yeah, look at them noodles. Super yummy. I'm not going to go too far. Someone will eat it. Someone always eats whatever I make here. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And then you end up with these little extra nuggets. Nuggets? Nuggets. I just made that word up. You can use tossed into like a soup or a salad or whatever. Then, so that we have this beautiful spaghetti, and I'm just going to give it a rough chop so that it's not going to be, you know, lady in the tramp when it goes to, comes time to eating it. So that's cool. And then the other noodle ingredients that I'm going to use, super easy. I've gone and grated 
carrot. Again, I use my box grater for that, and I use the big side. It's super simple. So some tossing some carrot. I've got some uh, red cabbage, rojo in Espanol, zanahoria, 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 zanahoria. <laughs> carrot, rojo uh, morado, which is our cabbage. I'm going to toss in a little handful of that. Again, it's going to give some good crunch. And I have three little colors of chile dulce, or pimienta, or sweet pepper. I'm going to add a handful of that. I mean, come on, the colors are beautiful. And I think I've, I've been talking about this before. You know, if food looks good, you're going to want to eat it a lot. And like, healthy food needs to look beautiful. As far as I'm concerned, it needs to be an array of color. You need to be eating a rainbow. And that, my friends, is a rainbow. So, all we need to do now is add in a bit of our pad thai sauce. I'm going to use a little bit more than I think is necessary because we want to really punch up these raw vegetables. There we go. So I'm just going to use it. I would use my hands, but I don't want to deal with having to give them a good wash after this because your hands are your best tools. Um, but I'm going to just mix this up using a couple of spoons. So pretty. I actually, I lied. I'm going to use my hands. Sorry, I don't mind. Keep it together here. So there's my plate. I'm and, and also, big tip, big old white plates are really nice for presenting um, plant-based food as well. So I would like them even bigger. Ones, so, I grab a little one today. so all I'm going to do here is grab some of my beautiful pad thai, super saucy pad thai. Toss it on this plate here. I like, and I like to stack this nice and high. Then it's time to make it look extra pretty. So what I'm going to do here first is take my this paper towel that I have, and I'm just going to wipe the plate any little saucy bits that were not plain and fair. <laughs> I'm going to add a slice of lemon. A, because the color is beautiful, and B, it's a nice touch to add a little slice of lemon at the end. And this is what the inside of our lemons look like here. Our regular old lemons, if you ask for lemon here, Puerto Rico, this is what we get. And it's like limon mandarino, I think is the name. The orange on the inside and green on the outside. It's super, super tasty. And then I'm just going to chop up a tiny bit of cilantro, like not too crazy. I'm not going to go too crazy with it. I love, I love the like the, the look of just really rustic plating. I got my cilantro, my cilantro there. Then I'm going to add some pea sprouts, Veros chinos. Oh my gosh, I'm not paying attention to the comments. I've been on that. Do that, and then I might just add a couple pieces of fresh carrot around there. Super pretty. And voila. If I had any extra nuts kicking around, I would do a little drop of nuts around here. Cashews. I'm going to put my jalapeno on there because it looks pretty. Look at that. Raw vegan pad thai. Does that look appetizing or what? Yay. Yay. And it has nothing but vegetables in it and a tiny bit of natural fruit. Super, super delicious. If you guys want to have a try, I'm just going to put that right there. Okay. Actually, I'm going to take a pic. No, go ahead and eat it. I don't know how to take that. I got a million pictures of pad thai. Let's be real. And you know what else would be nice? What I like to do for plating sometimes is just take a whole piece of herb like that and pop it on top. And it's kind of, that gives you a, a hint to all those cilantro haters out there that there is cilantro in this dish. <laughs> so there we have it. What am I at for time? 2.34. Barbara Marie Steele says, it looks delicious. I wish I could hear you, but the sound is muffled as it keeps going in and out. Oh no, I'm sorry. We're gonna, I am gonna provide, provide a recipe. You're welcome for the demonstration. I'm going to try to fix the audio problems as well. I'm going to try to get a mic and everything set up for this. And Lisa would love the recipe. I'm going to have it. And Charles says, yeah. All right, perfect, you guys. So that's it for today. Um, I've kept it to 35 minutes, which is pretty good. And I can't remember what I'm doing next week, but I hope that you guys join me. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is. It's a surprise for all of us, the content for next week's class. But thank you for joining me, and I hope you guys try these recipes. If you do, Please share it with me. Send a, send a picture here to the Rhythmia Facebook page or link through to my Facebook page and send me your pictures of your finished products. I would love to see it. And I look forward to seeing you guys all next week. Thank you for joining in for Tigus. Ciao, amigos. Bravo, bravo.